Hey, welcome to the Richesson Reverse Engineering channel. In this video, we're going to show how to target a glitch at a specific time on a processor, specifically the same processor that's used in one of these smart meters. Now, the attack that I'm going to use was also used a long time ago on PTV devices, so satellite TV cards for hacking them, for getting free TV, and one of the devices specifically was a device called an unlooper. And so, a long time ago, if somebody had a hacked satellite TV card to get all the channels, what they would do is the company would send down some code to reprogram the little microchip in that smart card and put it into what's called a loop. So the card would be looped, it would be basically unusable to get free TV anymore. The hacking community didn't like that so much, and so they developed a device called an unlooper. And that unlooper essentially performed a glitch on the smart card to get it to break free from the loop it was stuck in. I'm going to show that technique in this video, along with a couple others, to, to show how I target an attack on a chip at a specific time. In the last video, I showed how to create uh, an unexpected event to glitch a processor, but when I would do it, the value that would appear on the screen every time I glitched it would be different. I would just be glitching different points in time, and that would result in a different value being displayed. What I was trying to do is interrupt a loop that was running, and when it would interrupt, it would just have kind of a garbage value in memory that it would display on the screen. Now what I want to do is actually target the glitch so every single time it lands at the same point, which means ideally the same number appears on the screen or, or something that's repeatable. So I'm going to show three rather interesting things in this video. The first one is this that you see right here, which is creating a glitch, but at the exact same time. So I have a trigger value that goes off in my code, and that trigger is going to be what I mark off of. And so when I see that trigger, I'm going to wait a certain amount of time, and I'm going to send the same glitch every single time. And what we should see is the same number appear. You'll see it's kind of between one or two different numbers, but it's a, essentially the glitch is landing at about the same time every single time. The second attack is to use the glitch to unloop. So I wrote some code. There's two loops. There's a loop up top that the code should run and stay in based on the values that are in the program. But if you glitch it at the right point, you'll mess up one of the values and cause it to fall through. This is similar to how the satellite TV cards would get out. It's not exactly the same. Anybody that knows about satellite TV cards is probably going to comment. Tell me it's not exactly the same. I know. It's not exactly the same, but the, I, the concept is the same. You are stuck in a loop, you do something, you glitch the clock, you glitch the voltage, you do something that causes you to break free of the loop. Once you're free, you're into some other code, maybe code that lets you rewrite a smart card or lets you uh, read something special out of a smart meter or something else. The third thing is the firmware dumping. So this is on a development board, but I found a point that you can glitch that if you do it while it's printing a string to the screen, it's going through and it's it's iterating through the values in memory, and I glitch it at a point where when it gets to the end and it should be done printing that string, it must put some garbage value in there, and it basically just dumps all the firmware out. That potentially could just be an attack that could be done directly on the smart meter if it's using the same compiler and everything, because it would be compiler dependent um, to, to do that glitch. Now each one of these techniques I'm showing, I'm using a device called a chip whisperer. You can see it, I talk about it in the last video as well. And it is allowing me to define the glitch. You can see it on the oscilloscope screen, exactly how far the voltage dips down and where I want to place the glitch. Those things are very important. So if you think about how this is working, the processor, any processor, is stepping through code. So it has a thing called a program counter or some other way of keeping track of where it is in its program and it's stepping through. And so what I'm doing is when it steps to a certain point of code, every time I want to send the same glitch. That's how we make this repeatable. That's how we look for things like when the processor is booting up, how do we glitch it in just the right point so that it skips security checks or, or other things that might be disabling the JTAG ports or other ports that will allow us to access the processor. So I think what I might do is wipe one of these smart meter boards. You can see I already have this kind of plastic case that I've custom uh, modified to give me access. And I'll reprogram the chip that's on this board. 
and I'll use that as my test uh, my test case. So it'll allow me to profile the board, profile how it was laid out, the capacitance, all these things, so I can come up with the values needed to generate a glitch. And then once I know I have a good glitch, I have a good way to hook up, I have my wiring measured out, all these things, I'll transition to a board that hasn't been wiped, that's still running the stock uh, software from the meter manufacturer, and then I'll try glitching at different points. So thanks for watching. Check out Twitter, check out TikTok. Uh, down in the description will be the GitHub and all the other places that you can find uh, information I post, the Richesson Wiki. 